ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to q3 fy24 earnings conference call of south indian bank hosted by icici securities as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr chintan shah from icici securities thank you and over to you uh, yeah uh, thank you yashasvi yes, uh, good evening everyone and welcome to the q3 fy24 earnings conference call for south indian bank uh, we have with us from the management uh, mr priya seshadri managing director and ceo along with other senior executives from the management team uh, so without further delay i would now like to hand over the floor to the uh, md sir uh, thank you and over to you sir thank you very much chintan uh, good evening to all of you and thank you for joining us for the south indian bank limited quarter 3 fy24 earnings conference call i am here together with my colleagues uh, mr thomas joseph uh mr anto george mr sanjay sinha ms chitra and others uh, let me start with the key highlights uh, of the financial performance for the quarter ended december 2023 total business grew by 10% uh, to reach 1,176,641 crores total deposits grew by 9% to hit 99155 crores just a touch short of 100000 crores gross advances grew by 11% to hit 77686 crores net profit for the quarter grew by 196% year on year uh, to hit 305 crores kasa amount increased by 3% year on year to 31529 crores net interest margin for the quarter stood at 3.19% provision coverage ratio excluding write off uh, improved by 688 basis points year on year to reach 67.08% and uh, pcr including technical write off improved to a touch under 78% gross npa uh, reduced by 74% base basis points from 5.48% to 4.74% on a year on year basis net npa reduced by 65 basis points from 2.26% to 1.61% improvement on roa to 1.07 so this quarter a return on assets came in at 1.07% and given our uh, given the structure of our balance sheet that resulted in a return on equity of 16.38% against uh, 6.42 for the same uh, year same quarter in the prior year recovery and upgradation in np accounts stood at 377 crores uh, crar at the end of the quarter stood at 15.6% of which tier 1 stands at 13.37% uh, we continue to grow our gold loan business is now stands at approximately 15369 crores uh, personal loan another segment where uh, we are a late entrant and we have a small book but the book continues to grow uh, we launched our pre approved personal loan business in december 2021 as of december 2023 our book uh, stood at approximately 2186 crores credit card is another area of uh, some growth Uh, this was launched in uh, 2022 uh, as at uh, december 2023 uh, we had issued 3 lakh 77134 credit cards uh, with monthly average spends of approximately 22780 uh, rupees per card the total book as on december 2023 was 1427 crores on the liability side core deposits grew 7% to 95088 crores nri deposits continued to grow and now stand at 29236 crores 
investment uh, approximately a total investment books stood at 26,654 crores, of which HTM was 22,374 crores, and AFS and HFT the rest. Uh, fresh slippages for the quarter was 267 crores, uh, which is amongst the lowest numbers that we've had in recent times. Uh, and it is in line with uh, the guidance that my uh, predecessor had given you. The overall restructured book stands at 894 crores, and the bank holds standard asset provisions, including standard restructured and FITL uh, loans uh, of the extent of 451 crores. Net interest income for the quarter was 819 crores. Core fee inc income increased 19% year on year to 178 crores. Treasury profit for the quarter was 113 crores. Uh, you would have seen from the investor presentation that has already been uploaded that a significant portion of our growth continues to come from the corporate uh, side. Uh, on the, uh, the asset book, corporates now constitute roughly, approximately 39%. Uh, and uh, and we, we also have included a section that talks about the steps that we're going to take going forward uh, to A, rebalance uh, our balance sheet, uh, improve our efficiencies, and also improve operating results uh, for the institution. So uh, we continue to maintain uh, momentum in disbursements and collections. Our strategy has not fundamentally changed. We continue to focus on elements that uh, my predecessor had focused upon uh, with, uh, with nuanced changes as to how those need to be implemented as we go forward. And the results that you see today are a reflection of the fact that uh, you know the underlying basis on which uh, the, the strategic elements were put into place were sound, and uh, we hope that as we continue to go forward, uh, our outcomes will be suitably rewarding. Uh, with that, uh, let me turn you back uh, over to Chintan. Should we begin with the question and answer session, sir? Yes, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. In order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants, please restrict your questions to two at a time. You may join back the queue for follow-up questions. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Rakesh Kumar. Please go ahead. We have a question from the line of Parth Mehta. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, my one question is, how is the cost of funds panning out for us vis-a-vis -vis competition? I think the numbers uh, you'll find in our investor deck. Our cost of funds continue to rise on account of the fact that um, our deposits are repricing. Um, so our deposit cost, uh, okay. cost, of, cost of deposits is right now at 5.18%. And I think that compares favorably with some of our competitors uh, who are Kerala-based. Uh, uh, and uh, so we continue to be well-placed on this front. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, as, our, as our deposits mature and as they get repriced upwards, uh, we do have uh, continuing uh, cost of fund increases, as can be seen in this chart on page 16 of our investment tech, actually. Okay, okay. So, uh, is there any cap that we are looking at or it will be a, a, a moving phenomenon as we go ahead? So, you were asking me, if, uh, you know, about our peer banks and how our cost of funding yes. was yes. Yes. to them. 
uh, you can see that on the federal bank uh, invested deck if you so desire and compare the numbers yourself and uh, okay. you'll find that we compare favorably favorably okay and the way ahead for us it 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 will get better it it will keep on rising from here on as the question is that it will continue to rise uh, from now on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's it. I'll join the queue. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Am I audible, sir? Yes. Yes, you're audible. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, sir, firstly, considering that this personal number for the nine months, and the book outstanding that we have loan book, I uh, would like to understand what is the average maturity of the loan book that we have, sir? We have not uh, computed that uh, as such. So our loan book uh, consists of multiple parts. Uh, there is a corporate loan book, uh, which is the largest chunk of our balance sheet, as you can see. Then there's gold loans. Gold loans are on average uh, six months maturity. Uh, then there is uh, home loans and mortgage loans and uh, stuff of that nature, which is a smaller chunk. And then there's MSME, which is, you know, between overdraft and term, which have, you know, reasonably long maturities. The area where we have uh, very significant uh, repayment and then disbursal again is on the corporate side and uh, we've not computed uh, the average maturities at this juncture. We can have it that available to you. We believe that it does in, in, a, in an rising interest rate environment, it offers us some advantage uh, in the sense that we are able to reprice our assets uh, periodically, keeping in view the price uh, of uh, on the liabilities end, and therefore uh, the structure as such is not disadvantageous to us under these circumstances. You're sounding muffled. Please use your handset mode. No, we can't hear you. Is it better now? Yes, please go ahead. So, sir, additional, the another question was this pertaining to the notes of accounts. There is a mention of a provision for around uh, 300, 3.1 billion, around 300 crore for uh, security receipts. Uh, so, if you can elaborate on that, what is the change that we have found in the you know uh, RBI guideline uh, pertaining to the security receipts? I think you are referring to an event that took place in the Q3 of the prior year, uh, wherein uh, certain provisions were made on a, to the assets that we were held, that were held by us in the form of security receipts, and they were written down to the extent of that amount. Uh, and uh, this is not an event that has taken place in this quarter. This is a, an event that happened a year ago. The consequence of that, um, was the fact that profits for that particular quarter were depressed. And as another consequence, the profits for this quarter compared to that quarter seem, uh, you know, are consequently 200% uh, greater. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. And to this fraud account, there's a provision for the fraud uh, in one branch. Uh, so, so what was that related to? That is related to an event that has taken place in one of our branches. A consequence of which is that we uh, uh, we suspect uh, that uh, there could be an impact to the extent of 28.6 crores or thereabouts, and that has been fully provided. Mr. Rakesh Kumar. Sure, sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. 
we have a next question from the line of Saranj Sethi from Summer Wealth Managers. Please go ahead. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, please. Well, my question is about cost to income ratio. As we see it is higher compared to payers, how does management see this one or two years down the line? And what is the guidance on net interest margin for upcoming years? So let me answer that. There are two questions, cost to income and net income, uh, net interest margin. On the cost to income side, as you rightly mentioned, uh, compared to our peers, our cost to income ratio is higher. Uh, we are currently uh, at about 61.98, which is very close to 62%. So if you see our investor deck, uh, you know, there's a... There are five areas that uh, we as a management team are going to uh, focus on. One is enhancing our portfolio resilience, which is basically a uh, complicated way of saying that we want to have a more granular look. We want to improve our branch productivity. And third is cost optimization. Uh, so uh, we are seized of it. Uh, we, the, the current high levels are on account of um, a few one-timers that we've had to take. Uh, so this quarter we provided for the IBA wage settlement that, that happened. Uh, we were accounting for it uh, at 15%. And uh, in this quarter, we've had to uh, make a difference between uh, the 15% and 17%, which is the final settlement amount. Uh, and we estimate that is approximately 24 crores the incremental provisions were taken. So to that extent, our expenses are overstated from the normal. But having said that, uh, our uh, base expense ratios, uh, even without this one-timer, is higher than our peers. And uh, as a management team, we are uh, looking at methods of uh, you know, addressing that and attacking that as we go forward. And with respect to net interest margins, with respect to net interest margins, uh, our net interest margin for the quarter came in at about 3.19%, uh, which is uh, sequentially lower than the prior quarter. And that is on account of basis uh, risk playing out in the sense that uh, our liabilities are now repricing faster than our assets. And as a consequence, uh, squeezing our margins. To address this, uh, there is no short-term method of addressing this very, very quickly. The only way to do that uh, is to change the structure of our balance sheet from an assets perspective, and that we have walked you through in this uh, uh, strategy parts of the uh, deck that we put out. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention is what I just mentioned. Our assets are of shorter duration. The lower yield assets, which are put out to very high quality corporates, are of very short duration. And the hope is that as uh, interest rates rise, we'll be able to transfer some of that to our customers and consequently keep uh, the NIM at reasonable levels. So I trust that answers your question. Is there any guidance on this for upcoming years? Sorry, sir, could you repeat that question? Sir, any guidance or names for upcoming years? Uh, I hesitate to give you a guidance um, um, because we are in the process of putting together a long-term strategic plan for our institution at this point in time. Uh, all I will say is that we want to restructure our balance sheet and have higher yielding assets, a uh, larger proportion of them on the book. So from a directional standpoint, we will be working towards taking NIMS up uh, as we go forward. We are hoping that uh, all our analysis and work can be done reasonably quickly and we can come back to you uh, with a guidance uh, reasonably quickly. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Prabal from Ambit. Please go ahead. Mr. Prabal? Hello, am I audible? Yes, please go ahead. If you can speak uh, a bit louder, please. Just, just give me a second. Is this better now? 
can you use your handset mode yes yes i have is this better now uh yes please go ahead okay oh hi sir congratulations uh so my first question is just an extension of the previous participant question uh how do you get in uh, branch productivity and cost optimization if you can explain your uh, strategy is there so on the branch productivity we've done a few things we've started uh, see branches do two things uh, prabhu one is they provide service so customers come in they have a query they they need something they provide that service the second is they sell products so we are doing a uh, we've started uh, you know we've done a whole bunch of analytical work to figure out on average different products when they are sold to a customer what the revenue stream is in the future and we have discounted that back to arrive at Uh, an expected value per product uh, and we have started measuring and this is something we call sales value added and at the branch level we have started measuring what is the value addition that is happening at the branch so all our products that we sell out of the branch we have this metric so at any given point in time we are in a position to tell how much sales has actually happened and value addition has actually happened so that measurement metric has now been rolled out and we are using that to also provide some form of rewards to our people as a uh, so we hope that this will make for two or three things it will make for comparison between one branch and the other because in the past you know branches sell various products we are an old generation private sector bank the branches sell not only liabilities they also sell assets they also sell fund, funded non funded products all kinds of products they they do and uh, comparing one branch with the other was became very difficult because you had to compare them on many axes with this you can compare them with one number and given that we also started um, a mechanism by which our people can be rewarded on their performance we think that will change uh, bring out uh, you know some amount of increased productivity at the branch level um the other thing that we've done is that we are working on our processes and our systems so uh, we had implemented uh, two loan origination systems one for our retail businesses and one for our wholesale business uh, not the wholesale but the smsme business uh these are uh, generic system installations which enabled us to book any type of customer for both the retail and the msme business we are fine tuning these so that these can be these become more uh, these become frictionless and you are in a position to actually do these loans quickly so there's a whole work stream around that which is an enablement work stream that enables the branches to service our customers better Uh, so all of this is actually in the in the deck. Uh, I'm happy to walk you uh, through it uh, uh, in greater detail uh, at another time. But in the interest, uh, given the fact that we have a large number of people on this call, um, I'm afraid I'll have to end this, uh, you know, at this point. But I'm, if there are other questions, I'll be able to give more clarity. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you for this. Uh, next question will be uh, so the MSME book. Uh, has been uh, sort of flat in last uh, three quarters so what is what is happening here and uh, how do we ramp up the book from here on okay the msme book uh, has been flat in fact it has uh, declined marginally uh, it is an area of uh, you know uh, focus for us uh, again i i you know it has two elements to it one is uh, we have to get our sales uh, engines firing and we also have to get uh, our uh, processes uh, and the technology arm associated with the processes working again the good news is the new originations in quarter 3 was the highest that we've had in recent times um, some of the reduction in balances that you notice are because of utilizations coming down in our overdraft account but having said that it's still not robust enough for growth to come so this is an area of great focus uh, we are working with our teams 
we are trying to enhance the number of people in this business and at the same time we are trying to change the process so that the product process all of that to make it more uh, appealing in the marketplace uh, so this is uh, something of a long haul we need to work on it so that we get the appropriate results as we go forward okay and uh, just last question uh, so how much of our deposits uh, will be coming from kerala and uh, uh, just a related question will be uh, we have we have improved our credit to deposit ratio in last few oh, quarters yeah. so 62%, 62% of our deposits come from kerala and what was your second question i'm sorry second uh, second would be uh, we have improved our credit to deposit ratio in last last few quarters uh, how is our treasury team thinking about uh, any range that we would want to settle at credit to deposit ratio so we are currently at about 78 and change credit to deposit ratio uh, we would like uh, i think there's a few percentage points left where we can go up on the cd ratio uh, without uh, creating any issues on uh, on liquidity management and impacting other uh, liquidity re liquidity related uh, matrices for the bank it will also be profit accretive if we were to be able to do that so from the bank's point of view point of view two things have to be noted uh, our deposit book grew 9% uh, year on year and uh, we believe that uh, the 9% growth is predicated by the fact that on the on the on the deposit side our pricing has been uh, uh, such that uh, our landed cost of deposit are lower than our immediate peers uh should uh, our asset side growth uh, pick up very dramatically we believe that we can get more deposits quite easily and therefore from a from a uh, credit to deposit ratio uh, point of view we believe that we are well placed 78% is not too high uh, i think uh, uh, even rbi is talking about Uh, between 70 to 80 and so on and so forth 70s 80 early 80s i guess uh, is, is an area of comfort for them this is my understanding from whatever newspaper reports i have been reading uh, so we think that they are well placed we think that there's space for us to grow this and i and that will be pnl accretive so so at this point in time that's where we are taking our business thank you uh, thank you so much and all the best sir thank you We have a next question from the line of Umang Shah from Kotak Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good evening. Uh, thanks for taking my question and uh, congratulations on the quarter, sir. Um, uh, just two questions. One uh, uh, on the on the capital raise. Just wanted to understand: uh, uh, Has the board taken any decision in terms of timing, quantum of the capital raise? um and uh, uh, and the route uh, that we would uh, 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 through which we would like to uh, uh, do the fundraise uh, umar i'm afraid the, on this subject there is no information that i am able to give you at this point in time uh, because no decisions have been taken uh, and uh, at the at the right juncture we will make all this information available as we go forward all right um okay um uh, and sir the second question is now um, while we do appreciate that uh, clearly uh, you and your team are in the process of putting out a long term strategic plan for the for the bank uh, in place but just want to understand that uh, clearly we have uh, crossed the 1% roa mark uh, after a fairly long period of time right um, um should we assume that uh, regardless of of the changes that you intend to bring into uh, um, uh, into the bank um uh, the, uh, the the uh, the trajectory the earnings trajectory or the trajectory of the returns ratio that we are seeing at this point of time will will more or less be sustained um uh, and then probably we see a gradual improvement or or do we see some bit of a disruption initially and then uh, see a pullback uh, how should we look at it uh, from a near to medium term perspective so you know at this point in time business as usual continues uh, so we have not changed uh, anything very dramatically over the last 3 months 
the areas of focus that uh, my predecessor had put in place continue to remain our areas of focus. There, there are some nuanced changes that are highlighted in the five or six pages that we put out in the Investor Bank. And the aim of these changes is to ensure that we make change incrementally and we deliver these changes over a period of time without impacting the near-term PL of the institution. If anything, over a period of time, the PL should grow. At least that's, the, that's our wish and desire. Uh, there is nothing that we are doing at this juncture that should have a negative impact on the immediate PL of the company. And that's quite clear. If you were to go through these five or six pages that we have uh, in the form of an investor presentation. Fortunately, I think there are no numbers on these pages, but, uh, uh, but, but I'd urge you to take a look at it, and when we have more time, I can walk you through it in greater detail. Sure. Um, sure. No, I think I think that's quite helpful. I mean, I've already been through the presentation, so so clearly uh, that's helpful. And we would be waiting for your uh, um, detailed strategic plan. Just one last data point, which I wanted a little more clarity upon. Uh, in our presentation, um, um, uh, 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 this time around, we have put out a, a risk weight density, uh, RWA density, which is at about 44 odd percent. Uh, just wanted to understand that within our corporate uh, book, uh, would it be possible for you to share? details as to what proportion of the book will be to, let's say, A-rated and above uh, uh, NBFCs uh, per se? 90%. I think I think we've given details on the structure of our total uh, balance sheet, uh, where 96% uh, of our corporate exposure is to uh, A and above. Uh, entities, 55% is to AAA and above. Uh, NBFCs as a subset, uh, we deal largely with high-rated NBFCs. So I would think that, um, you know, 19 out of 20, 95%, uh, in other words, uh, plus would be A-rated and above. Uh, the exact number we can come back to you, I mean, I don't want to, uh, but in, it is in that ballpark. Would that answer your question? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so, so just one uh, one more data point. So, out of the total corporate loan book, how much would be NBFC lending? Roughly a third would be uh, NBFC. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Uh, no, I think that that helps. That helps. Perfect. Thank you so much, and I wish you and your team. Includes includes certain uh, types of NBFCs which are quasi government. These are not private NBFCs, these are quasi-government, uh, including one which is uh, quasi-owned by uh, the central bank. Oh, okay. Okay. So, all right. Okay. No problem. I think I think that, that uh, give, uh, gives a good flavor. Perfect. Thank, thank you so much, sir, and wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Jay Mundra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening, and uh, thanks for the opportunity, and congratulations on good quarter. Uh, sir, first question is, uh, no, I mean, first is uh, thanks for adding the uh, strategic, those five, six slides, and then the key focus area. Uh, within that, sir, if I see, uh, of course, you have earlier also indicated that you want to granularize the book more, um, and maybe you would have you would want to debulk the corporate piece. Uh, would that mean, sir, that the overall growth may be impacted as we go ahead, because corporate is still around 40% of the overall loan book, uh, and hence the overall growth uh, may look a bit weaker. Thanks, Jay, for the question. Uh, we are trying to do it in such a fashion that growth does not suffer. Uh, so we are hoping that uh, you know we'll continue to press the pedal on corporate till such time as other areas start growing. Um, so, 
So in the near term, corporate continues our focus on corporate, high quality corporates continue. Uh, high quality corporates with shorter duration exposures continues. At the same time, we work on other businesses so that uh, you know we get them up to speed. And as they start ramping up and growing, then we start uh, de-emphasizing uh, on the corporate side. Uh, it does two things for us. One is it, it has a positive impact on uh, net interest margins because almost every other uh, place where you can lend money uh, has higher spread than uh, you know AAA rated corporates. Uh, that too, shorter duration exposures to them. Uh, the second thing uh, uh, that it does is that it changes the tenor profile on our, on our asset side. So it gives us uh, duration on the asset side, which is matched by duration on the on the liability side. Uh, so, so our strategy to answer your question in uh, in short, our strategy is not to take our you know eyes off the ball on the on the corporate side. We'll continue to emphasize that. And as we get growth on other areas, that's when we will see how to, you know, uh, how to restructure our own approach and how to, how to, you know, rebalance the portfolio. Up until then, I don't think any, there'll be any change in the growth rates. Understood. Uh, thank you. And um, sir, in your branch productivity slide, you mentioned tooth to tail ratio. Right, I think it's currently at 75-25, and then you intend to take it to 85-15 over the period. Yes. Uh, if you can elaborate, sir, what do you mean by that? I mean, is this like, uh, I mean, I mean, if you can elaborate there. <laughs> so basically, you know, the, what we may mean is uh, there are in a bank there are people who are customer facing and who provide services and sell products to customers, and then there are control functions and others who are back office functions. They don't deal directly with customers. They deal with papers. They deal with computer screens. They, they provide a valuable function, but they are not customer facing and therefore cannot generate new business for us as an institution. So in our bank at this point in time, our estimation is that the customer facing roles are roughly 75 for every 100 people, 75 are in customer facing jobs, maybe in the branch, maybe in other verticals where they are directly dealing with customers, or maybe in a regional office where they deal with the branch and meet customers, everything put together. And uh, over a period, and there are 25 people who are more control, help, process, that type of people. So if you want to have a more productive organization, we need to have more people directly facing customers and offering products and services. So that 75-25, we want to move over a period of time to 85-15. So that the number of um, arms and legs and you know bodies that we have that are actually directly producing increases. Does that answer your question, Jack? Yes, yes, sir, it does. Thank you. Uh, and secondly, sir, on MSME, right? So clearly that is likely to be the key focus for the bank. Uh, and you also mentioned that you want to intend, that you intend to, you know, streamline processes, uh, frictionless processes, etc. But is there anything tangible also in terms of, let us say, um, let's say uh, pre-approved MSME loans, which some of the banks are doing, or some of the banks are actually lowering the ticket size for which an RN is appointed. Uh, are such things also on the table that, you know, which, which is more uh, tangible versus the uh, turnaround time and, uh, you know, uh, 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 intangible kind of a thing? So I tell you what we've already done, Jay. Earlier, uh, so earlier this, these loans were being done by a small cadre of people who, uh, so our, our MSME business is divided into two parts, below two crores and above two crores. The below two crores had about 130, 140 dedicated people who were selling these products. Uh, and they were also dedicatedly helping in processing these loan applications. What we have done over the last three months is 
we moved these 130 people into the branches and we told all the branch people that every one of them is responsible for selling these MSCB products, not just this 130. We also trained everybody on the branch on how to use the system. They bear, uh, you know, the, the basic uh, understanding of MSME requirements, credit, etc., etc. Full training has been conducted over the last few months so that they are in a position to actually sell this product. So from 130 people, <coughs> we now have 948 branches, all of them capable of selling this product. So that activity has already happened. In addition to that, we are now saying that these processes will be simplified uh, and uh, systems will be set in place which enable this to happen. And frankly, any volume business, the process has to be fixed first. It is impossible for you to get volume unless your process and systems are such that they are frictionless and they actually enable things to happen. So two, two things have happened. We Less than two crores have gone back into the branch. It is owned by the branch. It is run by the branch. We are hoping that that will be a big <coughs> force multiplier for us. And to help that force multiplier actually deliver properly, systems, process, etc. are being reworked. Together with some fine tuning of the product and so on and so forth. So all of that is underway, Jay. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. It does, yes. yes, sir. And last two data keeping questions, sir. Uh, we have done the wage revision, assuming at 17%. But is there any residual uh, provisions that need to be made for, uh, let's say, uh, pension um, uh, pension related liability? Yes. Uh, there could be, because at this juncture, it is not entirely clear to us as to how the pension related aspects of the settlement would pan out. Uh, information is not available. Uh, we didn't put that in our deck here. Anyway, uh, if we have uh, missed highlighting that in our deck, my apologies. Uh, there could be incremental uh, provisions that could be required, uh, depending upon how the IBA settlement deals with uh, uh, retirees. So to that extent, there could be an incremental provision. But we don't think that that is going to be very material. I mean, uh, okay. So any, so any ballpark number? I mean, could it be like 100, 200, or even? No, no, no. Had we known, we'd have made the provision. Uh, no, Jay. Yeah, I mean, we have no, uh, we have no knowledge. So whatever is uh, information that is available today, where a liability uh, could be crystallized. Uh, that has already been taken to the PNL. Where information is not available, it is impossible for us to take that into our PNL. Right. And the last thing is that the, the CET one that we report, that is, does that include the nine months profit or that is without including the nine months profit? It is excludes, excludes the nine months profit. So, thank you, sir, and all the very best. For the thank you, sir. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, would like to remind participants to press star and one to ask a question. We'll take a next question from the line of Tejas Shah from Laser Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, so this time of treasury income, uh, if you look at the segment wise, is around some 98 crores if I'm not wrong. And earlier it used to be in a loss of 13 crore. Last uh, year it was some 158 crore loss. So are we going to sustain this profits on the treasury side? Uh, you know, treasury by, by definition is a little volatile. It is not an accrual income. It depends upon market factors. The trends are reasonably positive. I mean, 10-year uh, GSEC has been dropping. It has come all the way to 7.15%. It has picked back up now. But if those same trends remain, then I think all the banks, not just us, will have a reasonably good uh, year uh, going forward. Uh, this treasury income, we were helped by a variety of factors. 
uh, whether those factors will continue to play out uh, in the times to come, we don't know. But we are well prepared. And on the fixed income side, uh, on the rate side, I think we are in a reasonably good position. If the rates move in a positive manner, I think a very substantial quantum of uh, income can be had. Okay. And uh, can you throw some light on the higher expenditures towards uh, staff and other things? Because uh, your other expenditures have also gone up, and even I think your employees' expenditures have also gone up. So, if you can, then is that going to sustain or uh, it proceeds to a little higher stress on those? So, our employee costs have gone up on account of, uh, of a one timer hit. Which is basically the IBA settlement, wage settlement. Uh, we have been uh, provisioning for it at 15%. It has come in at 17%. So for a period of 14 or 15 months, we've had to make good the 2%. And for that, we have taken a 1% uh, one-time hit of 24 crores. Uh, so to that extent, our employee cost is overstated. If this uh, 17% uh, was not the rate settlement and it was 15%, our employee cost would have been less by 24 crores. Uh, we have two areas where our expenses have risen and materially risen. One is employee cost, as you rightly pointed out, and the other is on uh, expenses associated with our cards, credit cards business. Uh, but on the credit card business, we also have a very significant growth in revenue, and we have some significant growth in expenses, uh, which is optically uh, impacting the uh, uh, the revenue trend line. Uh, so, if you were to isolate or remove uh, the the credit card expense growth, uh, you will find a more normal. Uh, growth rate because uh, and, you know uh, uh, the, the, the credit card business gives us a very substantial revenue uh, growth as well as an expense growth. If you look at it on a net basis on, on the revenue line, you will find that the expense growth rate moderates quite considerably. Uh, as we go forward, perhaps we can give you further details so that it becomes a little bit clearer for you to understand our expense dynamics. Thank you. That is from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Chintan Shah from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so first of all, con uh, congratulations on great set of numbers and on that one person ROA mark. And thanks for the strategy update. Uh, so there are just uh, two, three like, long-term questions from my side. Um, uh, so one is on the mix. So we are saying that we'll be targeting MSME and retail and shifting our focus from the from the corporate. Uh, so how do we envisage the uh, loan mix could look uh, year on over the next from year over the next two three years or so? So how much uh, could be the shift we expect of to personal and MSME from the corporate? And so uh, how uh, how should that play out on the margin front? Yeah, first is that. So we, we do have a, a strategic plan uh, which we've worked out. Uh, we haven't disclosed it yet. We are in the process of tuning it. Okay. The aim is to increase our margins. Uh, that's the reason why we are doing all of this. Um, so over a period of time, not immediately, we, our total balance sheet grows. Uh, we are hoping uh, you know it grows in the mid teams uh, and. Uh, we start with the corporate uh, balance sheet remains where it is, which is currently 39-40% of our total outstanding. And over a period of time, it starts shifting downwards. And uh, over a three or four year period, we hope to bring that down to the early 30s and grow other businesses. Which I don't. It doesn't mean that corporate shrinks. It only shrinks in percentage terms. Right, uh, and uh, that uh, six or seven percent difference is added to the higher yielding books on the MSME side, as well as 
black we we are very very underrepresented in loan against property for instance our total balance sheet size on lap is only what 2000 crores so some of these areas where we are significantly underrepresented where there is an opportunity to grow it gets added there and we hope that that gives us a significant fill up in uh, on 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 spreads given the fact that our cost of funding is lower than some of our peers we are hopeful that the spread or nim expansion to us will be quite considerable if if this strategy were to work out Mm, so, uh, so this is helpful. Uh, so, one thing on this uh, new initiative which we are taking uh, by 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 increasing the brand morale, increasing the sales focus, uh, giving empowering uh, employees more. Uh, so, is there any resilience from the employee side or the employee union, or uh, they are happy to do this and uh, in return they will also be getting some additional bonus or something? So, how very uh, their rewards are also be very generous for them to. Uh, work extra or uh, how does that work? Yeah. So we are we are keeping those areas. In, I mean, we are we are trying to ensure that uh, we communicate with uh, with all the constituents of the bank actively. Uh, so far, our uh, industrial relations have remained uh, healthy, and uh, there is no. Cause for us to believe that any of the actions that we are taking will uh, that. Uh, so, as we press forward and as we become more and more uh, focused on these elements, we will continue to work together with the uh, unions and associations to ensure that we maintain uh, the current level of uh, dialogue and discussion that we. Kind of relationship that we have. Okay, and uh, so, so one last question from my end. Uh, so we are talking of cost optimization and so probably some uh, decline in the cost income also in the coming years. Uh, but so with that increasing focus on MSME and retail, uh, so uh, don't we see some rise in the cost as well, or the most of the rise will be front loaded and the benefits will come at a later stage? Should you look at that way? I think you ask a very, very good question. Uh, from, a, from our point of view, a very significant chunk of our costs are fixed. Uh, so if we can get higher productivity, cost income ratio will automatically reduce. I mean, that's the basis on which we have built this. As we try and create, uh, you know, alternate distribution channels, and as we try and take out, uh, do some of the other things that are there here. There may be expenses associated with them, and we will, you know, we will try and report that separately, and we will try and report to you the core bank expenses separately, so that we can distinctly see where it is going. At an aggregate level, we are very, very conscious of the fact that 62% cost to income is a high level, and we want to have this reduced. So our strategy will be built around. The fact that if we are doing something new and we are investing money on something, we will try and time it in such a fashion that uh, you know the trend line on the cost side uh, is uh, is reasonable and it shows uh, traction, uh, i.e. the cost is uh, headed downwards as we move forward. That is something that we will be very <coughs> focused upon. Uh, so, so point again, just one follow up on this last one. So, so we are uh, assuming that the productivity, yeah, we are uh, expecting that the productivity will increase, but how do we make sure that the, the productivity will uh, increase and that too won't in, lead to any additional cost? That is my question actually. And how are we expecting that the productivity will increase only that way? So that is the management challenge. I mean, we have to get our productivity to increase. <coughs> our people are well paid. Our employee wage costs are driven by IBA standards. We need um, our productivity levels are such that we believe that there is a reasonable scope for increase. <coughs> and uh, our costs associated with that increase is going to be minimal uh, when compared to the aggregated costs that are fixed in nature. <coughs> 
As I said, we've launched the sales related rewards, uh, which incentivizes people to be more uh, active on sales. Uh, in the, in the grand scheme of things, the cost associated with that is not material, which is why I say that, uh, you know, if the management uh, challenge can be met, then we should get higher productivity without increased costs. Uh, sure, sir. So this is actually very helpful. Uh, thank you patiently for answering all my questions. I'm looking forward to the uh, strategy. All the best. Thanks. Thank you. We have a last question for today from the line of Ravindra, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, Mr. Yes. Ravindra, please go ahead. Yeah, thanks a lot for the opportunity, sir. And uh, I wanted to discuss with you in the last call as well. I did not get the opportunity. I'm a very long term investor. From 2011, I'm invested. And I'm closely following up uh, with the bank's uh, progress. So, one question is. So banks like IDFC such bank, they are giving a monthly interest on the savings and they are uh, gathering a very good uh, kata. So why is it not possible for a bank like us? That is one question. Yeah, yeah. please go ahead. No, sir, do you have a second question also? I can answer both together, sir. Yes, sir. And I was going through your annual report in the Karu Vaisha Bank and there you had mentioned that uh, loans within two crores. There is some automate, automation something, right? Uh, without manual intervention. It's a less manual intervention, maybe. So why is it not done in the OSID? Okay. With respect to, sir, uh, the uh, savings account, high interest rates where paying interest on a monthly basis. Uh, yeah. The reason why we haven't considered it uh, yet is that we have a uh, the only banks that are offering that are the newer institutions, sir, if you look at it. It is the uh, institutions that, can, that have come into being of recent times as banks. They are the ones who are aggressively offering that product. That is because they don't have a traditional casa uh, base. Uh, we already do have it. And, uh, and for us, uh, to offer that would only mean a significant increase in cost for us without very significant benefits to our customers. I mean, from our customers, we, they transact with us on the basis of the relationship they have with us and the comfort they have with the branches, etc. So this does not really provide anything incremental to them. It may attract new customers, but having said that, the cost of such a change is so high that we don't think at this point in time that it is warranted. Uh, with respect to your second question, Automation for less than two crores, that is something that we are working on. That is part of our strategy. Hopefully, we'll be able to do this uh, reasonably quickly, sir. I trust that answers your question. Yes, sir. And recently, we received a communication. Uh, there will be a fundraise using the rights issue. Is there any progress on that, uh, or is it just a discussion? At this juncture, sir, I am not at liberty to talk about that. Okay, sir. That's my last question. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you, sir.